hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video I just want to do a little bit more work on the wrap that is going to go around my advent calendar um, stitchery so in one of the previous videos I'd placed down the background fabrics pinned them and I've since now stitched everything down so it's nice and secure I did some uh, seed stitch through here. I do want to bead these little um, berries. I did a similar treatment in the red book of that piece of fabric. Uh, I'll see if I can grab it. I've got a little pile here in front of me, bits and pieces. So I'll just grab that red book and see where I did that. Yeah, here, and I did it elsewhere. They're like little sequins, but I did pin some beads on somewhere and it gave quite a nice effect. So I want to, there. I really liked how that came out. And I've got the blue version of those beads. So I'm going to um, repeat that on this particular section here so I'm yet to do some beading but what I'm sort of doing is just working through the stages of layering to create this um, cluster of bits for my wrap so the background is done and then I had the idea of doing a J out of this twine inspired by this book that I picked up um, at a op shop and when we flip through it, this one here caught my eye because it's got this floral treatment on it and I like the shape of it. It felt to me like more like a J than some of the other ones. So that was my inspiration. So I was just been sitting here looking at that J, winding my fabric down and just with normal cotton, I stitched over the twine let me bring the twine up to the camera so you see it on my fingers it's fairly thick so I wanted it to be nice and chunky and not lost because I, I believe this piece this wrap is going to get quite heavy and thick with all sorts of embellishments so I needed this to sort of hold its own otherwise it would have been a little bit lost I certainly didn't want it as um, as fine as this snowflake over here so it's got a bit of structure about it. So what I'm going to do now with you guys is I'm going to start the next layer of decorative elements. You sort of want to start with the biggest things leading down into little detail. Now, I did a bit of a yo-yo feature over here, so I feel like I've covered off on yo-yos. So I did want to do more of the snowflake. Now, one of the pieces on the advent calendar was snowflakes. So I put this little guy here and I also did a little embroidery of a snowflake flake and I really love them. So I've grabbed out my snowflakes and I want to also go through some motifs of lace that I've got to see if I can find something else to lay in here. And the other thing I got was all my rosettes. And because there's this blue tone in here and even this caramel tone, I thought we might have a play with some of these elements around the letter J to build up a bit of a floral treatment. So that's what we want to do next. First of all, um, what will we do? Let's have a look at snowflakes. This is one of those books that you open it up and pop things inside and it's where I'm keeping my snowflakes. Now, if you remember back to when we did the snowflake prompt, I asked my friend to crochet a heap of snowflakes which I was my plan is they'll eventually be starched and end up on my Christmas tree so she did so I gave her a heap of yarn and off she went and come back with a heap of them crocheted so I just want to see if there's one in here that maybe I add to the cover sort of don't want it too big sort of think maybe something here so this sort of if it's too big it's going to overpower my piece what about this one 
Yeah, I sort of like the look of that guy. It's not too big, if that makes sense. Um, I could probably, if I went a little bit smaller, I could probably, uh, I don't like him. I sort of want a piece to, and I like him. This, where this bauble finishes here too, I want to build something clustery here just to disguise the fact that that's a funny little end to that piece. So a snowflake would be perfect. And I'm looking for ones that give me a little bit of space to put beads inside them. I like the look of this little guy, actually. I'm going to pin him down. And then I will um, stitch him, stitch him down to hold him and then come back through and embellish all of the gaps with beads. That's going to really help get a little bit more bling on the front of my piece. Plus it's nice to have these snowflakes involved because they were made by my good friend. So it's good to have her contribution on my piece now this little guy I'm thinking he could easily sit there you know maybe move him over a little bit I don't want to interfere with this piece because once that's beaded yeah I like that It's very quickly you can fill up your background with some big elements and then you can start thinking about even smaller details like you might then start focusing just on that corner and make it the size of a 50 cent piece or a 20 cent piece just working something through up into here I haven't got any ideas yet but once we get these larger elements on I think It'll really start coming together. I don't think I need any more snowflakes, so let's put that away. Now, I've got this area here, which I was going to just camphor stitch that all, but I decided I'd have a look through some lace motifs that I had and see, I definitely don't want pink, don't panic. Get rid of the pink and see what we've got here and we can sort of handle a fairly big piece I think that's like got a corner element to it no no it's two there's two of them two it's too bold for my piece I'm sort of looking for something a little bit more delicate Yeah, no. Oh, what's this? Oh, I like this. This um, this bag of bits and bobs came from a lady who I have a feeling was a wedding dressmaker and she was de-stashing. This sort of makes me feel like something like this would be on a bride's dress. Okay, let me... I'm, I'm liking this. She's all a bit twisted in that. So there's a real shiny side and there's a real flat side. Okay, let's get some pins in here. We need a bit of law and order. Yeah, it's the right size, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is... This nearly looks like a vine growing up the piece. We could probably even, when it goes on to the journal, because this is a circular wrap, we could make this appear more on the spine as a feature. So I'm just going to start pinning it down to hold it because then I'll need to invisible stitch it down. So let's just get down the bottom here and just start 
finding space for all of these little bits. It really pops on that navy, navy piece of linen in behind there. I'm liking that. Is that the right way? Oh god, yeah. I'm happy with this. I probably could have broken it down, like we could have cut it there and had a gorgeous little flower. But I'm sort of loving the fact that it looks like it's overgrown and this vine has just taken off up the side of this piece. Now this wrap, I've been thinking about it a little bit because once the advent calendar gets installed at Christmas hanging on a cord ready to be, you know, unveiled each day as we go through the 12 days prior to Christmas, this wrap I'm thinking of using as a placemat, like a table placemat on a coffee table. So that way it's out too and it's just a nice decorative piece that could sit on a buffet or maybe I've got some Santas that are cream, uh, some Christmas trees that have golden creamy sorts of tones. So what I'm thinking is this piece will become an actual placemat within I'm covering up those little flowers under there just seems like a bit of a shame it is I'm gonna I'm gonna snip these little guys out of this lace they they are tacked down with a little stitch but I'm gonna pull them out seems a, a, a shame to waste them let's get them back out Pop them up here. Maybe they can be used around. So now I can lay that down. It's fun now working on the construction side of our project. We've been all busy doing our panels with our prompts, but there's a little bit of work to do now as we start to pull these, these projects together and a wrap like this going around your pieces is um, a really simple way of securing them. Now, of course, the base for all of the panels for this particular blue one was the concertina style where I concertinaed the fabric together and then their little panels are sitting within the folds of that concertina so really easy easy spine my red book of course is a bit different it's more like a, a more formal journal of which now I need to think about the spine and start piecing together um, how I'm going to bring my signatures together so now you're seeing this video, it's Saturday morning. So tomorrow I'm going to do some work on the red book and the building of it, bringing it into um, its final, final stages because it's getting to the point where there's only two more prompts left. So now I've got a really good feel for the thickness of spine that I will actually need. So tomorrow's video will be um, red book and building you know its structure so to speak I just wanted to spend a bit of time on my blue wrap just starting to get some more elements in position um, the J is in now so I just want to have now a bit of a play the other thing I want to do is see how I've got a height difference down here with my finger between the front and the back of the linen so let's, I want to have a look through my bucket of lace here to see if there's some lace that we could use to stitch in there to help um, fix that length. Gee, I like that. Just pull that out. Oh, what about this? 
it's come off of a blouse and it, it's been gathered and I've sort of roughly ungathered it but I've still left the thread in there because I like how it's got that element of crumpledness so I'm not going to pull out the thread that someone put in there I'm wondering well it certainly is the right length let's just pin this in because I'm liking the look of this I like the cotton element to it and we could have the flower come down over it maybe where the gathered thread is I'm going to come within a quarter of an inch of the bottom of my panel and I can run a stitch down the lady's thread there securing it to my piece I like the messy edge too it just adds more texture when I was a little girl growing up this lace I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of it because it's a tricky name you'll all know what it is was just so popular I had so many little little blouses with it on collars and oh I used to love it don't see much of it around now it'll come back into fashion so I'm pleased I've got a little snippet of this on there because that's a bit of a childhood memory there are all the things you want around you at Christmas don't you let's trim that off little morsel for somewhere Okay, I like that. And then I might be able to do something decorative along this edge. Maybe there's another lace I can find. Um, not that this one's the one, but I just spotted it. But you could lay something else in there as well to build up on it. And you could even do something else again just to create a cluster of interest there so I think I'll definitely be able to play with that area a little bit more okay what am I going to do with this is it something that could be added or am I just adding too much I'm going to leave it for now but I do we do have a couple more prompts that would be a beautiful piece to add into a stitchery. Where's my... I'm diverting here. Let's go to... Oops, I got my red one all caught up in it. Let's go to the back where we've got... Oh, I haven't shown you Santa, have we? Hang on, there you go. Our Santa prompt. Gee, that was remiss of me. I just wanted to get straight into the actual um, embroidery of the wrap. There's Santa. So what did I end up doing with him? I, I layered lots of lace in, or doily bits, plus some lace motifs that I had just to sort of break it up a little bit from that chunky doily look. I seed stitched all around him. His um, red hat and his red shoulder, I ended up laying some sari silk over it, which I think is still on the table. Yep, here it is. Some of this sari silk. I cut out his shoulder again and his hat and did another layer on top of it. So that sort of made it a little bit more dimensional. Let me bring the camera down to him so you can see that detail. Can you see the sari silk sitting over that calico hat that we originally put on? Because the calico went on to his hat and the shoulder and then I did another little bit of sari silk over that and just stitched it down. I did some um, stitching around the envelope, added a few little beads that pushed the green wreath that was on that envelope back. And then um, I went to do turkey work on his pom-pom in blue and it just didn't look right and it's because there was so much cream here there's there's no blue so I ended up just doing some satin stitch over that little piece now 
um, what else did I do? I, then I just filled the background with seed stitch. Just seed stitched it. And that made Santa nice and puffy, which has actually made him feel like he's come forward and he's handling himself in that um, heaviness of the embroidery around. And as you recall, I did the, the numbers um, a week or so ago. And that's the number 10 that goes with this panel. So really happy with Santa. Now I've got a hang of a mess. Now let me just come up a little bit. I think this concertina style of journal, it works, but I'm finding that it does sort of want to pull apart on me a bit, even though it's all attached there. But you've got to remember it's still a concertina. So I guess I've got to have a think about, do I create a spine treatment for that? Just to hold it all into position? I don't know. I probably don't need to because really this is a calendar, an advent calendar. But it is wriggling a bit on me. So I sort of feel like it needs something to anchor this side. Something to think about. And look at the end of the day. If I don't get to that project and it is annoying, that's something I could do next year as part of my Christmas stitching is work out let me come up a bit in my camera guys is work out what to add to that spine to keep it all you know in place a little bit more but it certainly you know look at that like that's really chunky it feels so beautiful so beautiful okay now oh what was i doing i was going to bury in my pages that piece of crocheting so that when we get our next prompt it's there waiting for me number 11 i'm going to put that there because i think that needs a home in ow there's a pin ow. i think that needs a home so let's just slip it into there for the next prompt if not the next the one after it's definitely going to be worked into it now, where was I? The J. Let's have a look at these flowers. I might zoom in again so you can sort of see what we pulled together. So we've got these little fellows and we've got this. Oh, this little guy's come apart. See, things like this, get this glue off. Where's the one? There's one that's glued together and you know holding but this one's come apart little bits like this they're great for little features on your piece let's find a home for this morsel just get rid of the rest oh there's that pin again i need to <laughs> i need to cover that hang on guys i'm gonna put this fabric here before I catch myself. See little little elements. And I like it there. There you go. Oh, you know, can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. Let's go back out, back out. We're back down to the bottom here. I'm going to stitch this little ruffle onto here. Just because. Just because I like it. This is where you start breaking down areas to smaller elements and smaller little stitched bits. So we've got a broken flower. The colors match beautifully. Little decorative piece on top of another piece. Let's bring that flower back into position. Love it. There we go. 
sort of gives that vine a base to work from. Gee, there's some pins there. I'm going to cover that now before I get pinned again. Okay, back to the J. Let's zoom in again. Okay, how sidetracked am I getting? Now I've got to say, being this, this represents my mum's initial, she really liked browns and that. I'm the blue girl and she was more, she was a redhead, so she's more autumn tones. So there's three or four little brown ones here, creams. She was, yeah, she was autumn and I was more of the bright summers and love that. It's not really the right colour. It's more of a turquoise. See, these are very open and I like that idea because I can get in there and embroider. Yeah, I'm liking him. He's a definite. Let's just pin him down. We'll stab him in for now. I do want to get some of this torpy. Maybe I've got to tilt that a little bit. Because I want to see those little green leaves even though green's not anywhere that green was a color mum would wear so i'm just gonna pop it in there because it just has to be i know i'd like to try and stay true to my color scheme but sometimes for whatever reason you just have to yeah i like that do i need a third one i feel like it's overpowering it that looks like a patchworky thing this little guy, no, nah, looks like a petticoat. Looks better broken down here, down the bottom, which you can't see down here. I like it down there, but I don't think we need that. Let's have another look at this J. Oh, it's looking very lush. I do like that. We've got our little flowers here. Just tuck them in as we build. Don't want to get too close to that loop, I don't think, because I'm going to start losing the idea that it is a J. Now I've got some other little flowers by the meter. You know what those ones you buy at Spotlight? Here they are. Which is a bigger size again. I'm thinking we... <clears throat> Let's get one of those in first, just to start softening. Let me get closer. There we go. So we sort of want to soften. Where's the book? How did they do that, that J? Definitely a feature where I'm working. A little bit at the top and a little bit over there. Okay. So. A little bit at the top. And a little bit over here. So let's get another one of these little guys. And just pin it on that hip. Pin it there. I'm going to leave that 
as it is. I think, what am I thinking? I think once I start putting some little extra stitches around, like blue lazy daisies and some beads, I'll be able to build out on that. I don't think I want to add too much more to that cluster of three in the way of lace. I might just tuck another one of those down here. Now, that lace is in my bucket. Maybe, let's have a look at this again. Maybe we can pinch. I'm thinking of pinching this daisy out of here. Tucking it in there just helps build the story a little bit more, plus connects it to the piece below. And then if I pop some beads coming out and some little stitches, I think it'll really I'm gonna jab myself out. Yeah. Do you realise how dangerous our hobby is here with all these sharp objects? Goodness me. My poor fingers. Some days I just seem to get them all the time. I was like, what's, what's going on? <laughs> Hopefully I can get a pin in there just to hold it. Yep. And this little guy down here. You know, as I start to stitch all this down, things could change and move if I find that it's not quite right, but it's a start. Give me something to stitch tonight. Okay, don't think I'm gonna need any more of that. All right, let's zoom back up. I don't make you seasick out of this. They can go away. I'm pretty sure I don't want. I sort of feel like I need to drag more of this torpy colour through my piece. Yeah. That is going there. See how I've got these golden beads in that snowflake? Let me bring it up. See them there? Sort of all matches in so I think I can stretch the boundary a little bit with this torpy color I'm going to pin that flower there now it's I've decided that it's going to be a a element to lay on a um, bench at Christmas with some decorations and that it sort of allows me to go a little bit further in size too which I don't think is a bad thing I wonder if I've got a piece of lace that could come in under here. And just this one I use somewhere on here. Yeah, here. It's a good length. I wonder if I should put that along the top. Not it being all right. Just stitch that across the top of the piece. That would give it a nice finish. I'm going to pin it and have a look at it over the next day or so. And if it seems to be something that is resonating with me, I can stitch it down. I'm going to put it under my stitching so that the lace is all we see. And then we see my overcast stitch that is in there as well. So I should be able to just do an invisible stitch along there because that overcast stitch will actually look like it's holding it, but it's not. Is that lace the right way up? Yep. 
See these, let's say you're doing a table runner along this nature, you can just keep adding. You know, if in the future you want to turn this into a bigger piece to go down a dining table, we can just add another section. That's the beauty of this slow stitch. You are able to go anywhere. I want to do a book review in a, a few videos time. It'll probably be December because I've had some books given to me by Santa. And there's a couple in there that just blow my mind. Oh boy. It is just head spinning stuff. Ow, there's a pin. Youch. I took the cover off of that. <laughs> oh, my elbow. So, yeah, I want to do a book review. It'll be in December. I've got um, a list that I've been gathering names of books on, and it would appear that Santa has got hold of that list. And these parcels started arriving. And because I'm nosy and didn't realise... I've started opening some of these parcels and I'm like, oh, I did order that. I didn't think I ordered it. And then I found out that Santa had ordered it. So my poor husband, he's like, she's already got her Christmas present. <laughs> and there's a couple in there on my, from my list. They're all from my list um, that are very much this world. And they're ones that either Sarah or Rachel have mentioned or... I've just seen pop up on Instagram, just all their artists that I follow. So I really want to show you what I got and also um, oh, I like that. And just sort of, I guess, tell you what come to mind when I saw this these inspirational pieces I'm liking how this is coming together I like how I've got this scallopy edge here then it gets straight then it scallops again it is so organic I just I am really loving it really loving it and it's starting to thicken up Another thing I can do underneath these flowers is add some eyelash yarn, which I should have some here. Yep. And it just sort of adds more texture. I could even put some under this lace. Like as that stitches down, I could tuck a little bit in there. Oh gosh, you could just do, oh, one of these books, no, I'm not saying, no, one of these books is photos of things in nature and then you create a slow stitch piece to, um, from the photo that you may have taken of the side of a tree and some bark and oh wow I promise I will talk about those books in December I better let Santa have a little bit of grace so he feels like he has achieved something secret I'm not being busted see I don't mind that just a little hint of fibers coming out. See, I've got some of this behind those yo-yos. Once that's stitched down, you'd never see the base and there's just little fibers there. I'm gonna cut and pin that because I like it. And then you can also bring it in that torpy color the caramel color in under those rosettes just to create more texture and interest yeah and just twist it underneath and when i stitch those flowers down there we go
Okay, you probably can't see it on the camera, but I'll just bring it up. Got all those little fibers coming out from underneath that. Love it. And then we'll have fibers coming out from that bottom edge. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. I've got some more to go on with. Once I get these beads in the snowflake, I definitely want to do something up here. I want to bead this over here. Yeah, it's coming together. There'll have to be something happen up here. Maybe I bring some more yo-yos up into that zone because I've got them here. Maybe I do a treatment of yo-yos across the top here. Do I have any yo-yos pre-made from when I did that? Let me grab my box from the Blue Project. Just have a little sneaky look in there. Wouldn't that be good if there were three yo-yos already in the bottom here? Nope, nope, nope. Okay. It's all good. Doesn't matter. We can make some yo-yos. See, there's those. That's the beads that I want to put on there. Yep. And then I can use some of these and these and those on my snowflakes. Oh, there's those dark blue ones. They're sort of not the right colour. Yeah, there's the beads for the snowflakes. So, yeah, heaps of fun. Okay, I think we have a plan. We're going to move forward on the wrap. So, yeah, I can stitch that, embellish them, embellish that, embellish that, stitch all my boundary pieces on, and... Um, I think there'll be another yo-yo treatment up here that will really tie it together. I do need to write Christmas in here. That's some embroidery that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, it's looking good. Okay, everyone. My wrap is coming together. Yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Look after yourselves and I will see you all in the next stitchery video. Bye. Hello again. I know I said goodbye, but as I was tidying up to move all this project to the lounge room for a stitching session later tonight, I found this. Now I added this to this project. There's a pin in there. I added this to a project um, <clears throat> the box of bits that I'd like to use and I haven't yet found a spot for it and it's been sitting there in the bottom and I just looked at it and I thought I have to add this so I'm just pinning now <laughs> this is getting blingy how Christmassy is this bling bling so I'm pinning it's it's not old because I can see the brand rib tech so It'd be something probably in our century, not century, wrong word, in our time, probably in the last 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. Riptex has been around a little while. And I've seen people use this trim on the bottom of lamps and things like that. So being that this is going to be out on my Christmas buffet, I'm thinking we could have some trim. Now, I just want to tuck that. I'm going to trim it. Where am I trimming it? just want to know that that's all going to marry up properly there and look like it's meant to be. So I'm going to trim it here. I don't need all of it. Oh, I'm so pleased I found a spot for that. Isn't it amazing you hop up and you think you're done and then you glance back at something and you're like, oh, 
I'm going to use that. And I think where all of this meets in this corner, I can pop a few stitches and that's going to hold really well. This is so not practical for a book on a shelf, but for a book of stitchery that is an advent calendar, banner, bunting elements, and then the wrap, the enclosure, is going to become a placemat feature thing. <laughs> Oh, I'm loving this blue project because it's just breaking all the rules instead of, oh, look at that. Can you see the, look at the dingle dangles. Oh, it's, it's perfect with those beads on those snowflakes. Yeah. Let me get rid of the, the, the board and get the black. Look at that. How gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm having a moment. Really happy with it. Okay, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye now. I'll um, join all these videos together, take some photos so that you can have a closer look. Owl pins. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to sustain a major injury here. I better go. Okay, look after yourselves. Bye-bye.